everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We had another busy week of racing with eight drivers seeing action all over the country. So let's get right to the results. Anthony Alfredo was at Atlanta Motor Speedway for the last race on the current racetrack surface. He had Georgia Peanuts back on the car for the second time this year. Anthony started 32nd, showed speed early, moving up to 23rd in stage one and making an incredible move to avoid wrecking by two cars that were spinning on the lower apron. Check out this video. 99, Suarez down the racetrack. What a great job by, is that the 38 of Alfredo? Yeah, Anthony Alfredo wow. on the 38. Wow, that was close. Anthony finished the race in 26. Let's check in for a post-race recap. Made a lot of improvements here at Atlanta Motor Speedway, did our homework and came with something different setup wise and uh, the car is a lot better. We didn't have the finish we wanted, but we had a, a smart, clean race and were able to build some stuff for the notebook. But sad that this place is going to be a repaint. I had so much fun hanging it out one last time here, running all the grooves. I'm excited to see what's to come, what the racing will be like in the future. But I hope everyone enjoyed the race. I met a ton of people here, a lot of fans, a lot of sponsor. Uh, great people from Georgia Pena here as well. So had an awesome weekend and excited for the next one. Up next for Anthony, his home track, New Hampshire Motor Speedway on July 18th. Sheldon Creed was at Knoxville Raceway as the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series made its debut on the famed Half Mile Dirt Oval. And yes, I did say Dirt Oval. Sheldon started the day rolling off seventh in heat race number four and finished fifth earning him a 16 starting position for the A main. Sheldon finished stage one and six, stage two and 15th, but was involved in an incident on lap 147, ending his day in 35th. Up next for Sheldon, Watkins Glen on August 7th, the last race before the playoffs start. Sheldon currently set seventh in points and has a guaranteed position due to his win at Darlington. Jesse Love returned to the Arkham Menard Series with Venturini Motorsports in his number 15 Mobile One Toyota. Jesse qualified seventh for the Menards 250 on the tight 3.7 mile paved oval. Jesse ran in the top five for most of the race and brought home a second place finish, just a half a second behind race winner Corey Hine. Jesse then made the trip to Anderson, Indiana for the super late model Red Bud 400 with Wimmer Motorsports, where he qualified on the pole, ran in the top four for the entire race before cutting down a tire with only 38 laps to go, but still managed a top 10 coming home in ninth. Up next for Jesse, Arkham Menard Series at Berlin Raceway on July 17th. Bryce Bizanson made his track debut at Magic Valley Speedway in Twin Falls, Idaho, for round five of the Northwest Super Late Model Series. Bryce qualified his number seven, Friends of Jacqueline, Jefferson Racing Prepared Ford in the eighth position and started fifth after the pill draw. Bryce fell back to seventh at the start, but quickly moved his way to fourth. Over the next 120 laps, he patiently worked on the leaders and moved into second and eventually finished in third. All 150 laps were run under green. Bryce currently sets second in points with three top fives, seven top tens in eight starts. Up next for Bryce, the Evergreen Summer Showdown at Monroe, Washington on July 24th and 25th. Cassidy Hines was at Irwindale Speedway for twin 35 lap pro late model features in her number 88 Nate Clower prepared Friends of Jacqueline Ford. Cassidy qualified six then brought home two top five finishes with a fifth and a fourth place. Let's get a race recap from the driver. Hi everyone, I had a great night of racing today at Irwindale Speedway in my Nate Clyer Motorsports Pro Late Model. I qualified sixth, so I started sixth in the main event for the first main, and I ended up finishing fifth in that main. Then they inverted top eight, so I started fourth in the second main, and I finished fourth in the second main. I feel like we had a really good car and we could have gotten a top three in the second main, we just didn't have enough for the last restart. But I feel like we learned a lot and I'm excited to come back again. Great job, Cassidy. 
This young lady is on a roll. Up next for Cassidy, Pro Trucks at Colorado National Speedway on July 17th, where she has two top four finishes in two starts. Grant Thompson took his number 21 spec late model to Mobile International Speedway to compete in the pro late model race. This was the first time the car was on the track and he made the most of it by qualifying second and then raced his way to a second place finish in the 25 lap feature. Let's check with Grant and get his take on the weekend. What's going on guys, Grant here. So uh, I'm gonna talk about the uh, this last uh, Saturday night at Mobile International Speedway in the Pro Late Mall Division. Now uh, before I talk about how the race went, I'm just gonna give you guys just some insight on how the on how the car was. So first off, you know you heard me say Pro Late Model. That's a 604, and we uh you know we actually had two late models in our shop, but they were 602s. You know from the junior late model deal that we were you know trying to get worked on. But, um, you know, me and my dad had a cool idea, you know, let's change the carburetor and see how we do. So we got to work on the cars and, uh, you know, like I said, 602, spec shocks, 8-inch treaded tires, American racers. And we went out there and we were like third in practice. And I was shocked at how fast we were compared to, you know, 604s with 10-inch slick tires and, you know, bump stops and everything. And I was, I was, I was like, holy cow. Anyways, ended up qualifying second. That was crazy. Uh, David Pritchett, uh, one of my dad's really good buddies, he got the pole. And, uh, you know, we took the green, kind of got single file. David, you know, he got the early lead, and we just kind of rode in second for the whole, for most of the race. And it was really eventful. It was real crazy what, you know, what happened. And we, uh, we had a few cautions, but uh, we ended up finishing second. I am so stoked and so shocked at how well we did with what we had to bring to the table. I mean, we had a... It was a really good car, you know what I mean? Like, it was, like I said, it was a 602, so we had, you know, we didn't have as much horsepower as everybody else in the 604s, but I can't thank everybody enough. I can't thank my dad, my mom, my whole family enough for coming out to watch me. Eddie Hollinsworth, Jason, strolling on Miles, just everybody that came out, came out there to help us work on that car. It was so much fun. Just, we had so much momentum rolling through the corners, just trying to catch everybody, but... I'll, I'll take a second place with what we had. I had a whole lot of fun, really good race. I can't wait to see what we can do with that car for the rest of the season. Who knows, we might bring it back and try to go win the thing, who knows, we'll see. Thank you guys for listening. Up next for Grant, Tundra Super Late Model Series at Jefferson Speedway on July 17th. Caden Honeycutt pulled double duty over the weekend in his dirt late model. It was quite an eventful weekend, so let's check in with Caden for a post-race recap. Hey everybody, it's Caden Honeycutt here. Uh, just give you guys a recap of the uh, hard-fought, tough weekend that we had in the dirt late model. Uh, went to Boyd on Friday, ended up finishing fifth in our heat race. It's not much to do uh, with the track that we were able to race with. Started 12th in the B, ended up third. Uh, went to the A main, started 15th, and was up to lap six by lap seven or so. Uh, and then it started overheating pretty bad, so we decided to pull in and not take the chance on it. Uh, we got it all fixed up for Saturday. Uh, we went to Abilene Speedway. Uh, decent heat race we were able to go from six to third in our heat race and uh, started eighth day main it was just a wreck fest and just a tough racetrack to race on it was just uh it was just not very not very there for everybody and it just had a big old pile up with like five to go or so and uh, it killed a bunch of cars including in our car a little bit but uh we were able to limp it home in fifth so uh it was a overall decent weekend we're actually have the car back there and we're going to uh morgan bagley's place and we're going to fix it up and find some more speed see you guys next weekend up next for caden second round of the virginia triple crown at langley speedway on july 23rd and 24th brody moore returned to colorado national speedway to compete in round four of the super late model series he qualified eighth and brought home another top 10 finish Let's get a quick race recap from Brody. Hey everyone, we just finished up race number four of the Super Late Models here at Colorado National Speedway. Uh, we had a good car all weekend. I'd like to thank all of my crew, uh, especially Nick King for all the hard work they did. Uh, all before the race, we had to pull the transmission out to put a new clutch in, and then we also had to replace a caliper. Um, with all of that work, we ended up qualifying uh, eighth position, and then we ended the main event in 
I think 10th place. I, I think we had a top 10 finish. So uh, I couldn't do this with all the help of my sponsors. I'd like to thank Assurance Risk Managers, the Garage Condo Storage You Can Own, MGF Trucking by My Go Flight, and a Topper Sales and Truck Accessories, Lear Truck Caps and Tonas, uh, Snug Top Toppers, and Race Face Advancement and Friends of Jacqueline. So we'll be back out here July 24th. So we'll see you soon. Thank you. Up next for Brody, back to Colorado National Speedway for Super Late Models on July 24th. Other drivers seeing action this weekend include Connor Mozak in the Trans Am TA2 Series at Brainerd International Raceway on July 17th. Jake Bowman will return to the SRL Pro Late Model Series at Irwindale Speedway on July 17th. Hudson Bolger will return to his legend car at Lanier Speedway on the 15th. Carter Whalen will be at North Georgia QMA on July 17th. And Landon Cox will also be at North Georgia QMA on the 17th. Well, that's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out the Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face driver. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.